25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Our next guest has enough credentials to fill up half of the page I'm reading from. There's a lot of stuff that he's done in his life. He's amazing. Uh, And some of the stuff he's done is going to be beneficial for you and for me. And I and you are not the only two. There are a lot of people buying a book called The Plant Paradox Cookbook. Let me just brag about the book for a second here. It is number one on Amazon right now in the wheat-free diet category. It is also number one on Amazon right now. I'll I'll get all the numbers. In uh, the vegetables category. And it's also number one in the special diet category. Um, and it only came out April 10th. That is yeah. that is pretty good. He is getting, uh, Dr. Stephen R. Gundry is the author. He's getting lots of rave reviews. Um, and he's on the phone to help us understand what the book is about and how we can use the information in the book to be healthier, perhaps lose weight, etc. Dr. Gundry, it's an honor to have you on our show. Look, can I just tell you a little bit more? I, I should read some of these uh, credentials. He's a, <laughs> he's a cardiologist. Bless you. Did you sneeze? Cardiologist, a heart surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Doctor. Why are you are messing up my whole intro for you? Oh, I'm so sorry. How you do, how you doing, Doctor? Good morning. He's very humble. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Nice to have have you uh, interview me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> do you do a radio show? It sounds like you would take the reverse role right there. <laughs> I suppose I suppose we have a good radio voice. So how's that? You do have a good radio voice. Um, so the book is a cookbook, but uh, what is the plant paradox? Explain what that means. Well, the uh, plant paradox was my uh, and continue to be my best selling book, uh, yeah. explaining that there are certain plants <clears throat> that we're not supposed to eat, and that seems very hard to believe because I actually want people to eat plants. But certain plants have a protein called a lectin. And a lectin is a protein that is designed by the plant to make whoever eats that plant ill or not feel well. Really? And it's the, yeah, it's the cause of all of our arthritis. It's all the cause of all of our autoimmune diseases. It's the cause, believe it or not, of most of our heart disease. And I spent the last 17 years researching what to do about these little troublemakers. Oh, my gosh. And so... Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, the plant paradox was an explanation of which plants you ought to eat and which plants you ought to avoid, and that's the paradox. Every kid who does not like vegetables is going to be so happy to hear this. Well, interestingly enough, uh, <laughs> in my first book 10 years ago, I pointed out that kids are designed not to eat vegetables because of these <clears throat> proteins in plants. And the kid is a growing little beast, and he's actually designed not to eat them. And then all of a sudden, when he stops growing in his late teenage years, he starts liking them. And that's one of the paradoxes. Oh, and is that supposed to happen naturally? Is that what we're designed to do? Oh, okay. That's what we're designed to do. So I know that the audience is dying for me to ask you what plants. How, 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 are there things we're eating? Like, is it string beans or is it broccoli? What is it? That's a great question. Actually, string beans are one of the troublemakers. So all beans have lectins, and uh, beans are one of the highest lectin-containing foods there is. Uh, Grains have lectins. Most people know gluten. Uh, Gluten happens to be a lectin. But there are actually lots of other mischievous lectins in other gluten-free foods. And some of the work that I've done and others have done have shown that most people who go on a gluten-free diet uh, do better if they think they're sensitive to gluten, but if we can get them away from other lectin-containing foods that don't have gluten, they get a whole lot better. Really? So, yeah. So, for instance, the, nut, the nightshade family, most people don't realize that potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, and even goji berries are nightshades, and oh. they contain... Yeah, they, the, the lectins are in the peels and the seeds. And there are a great number of cultures, including the Italians, who will not make tomato sauce until they peel and de seed their tomatoes because they're getting rid of the lectins. That's a lot of work getting the little seeds out of that thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's interesting. My uh, my grandmother was French, and she taught my mother that you always had to peel and de-seed a tomato before you served it. And all my, you know, 
childhood life, I only had sliced tomatoes that were peeled and de-seeded. And the first time I went away to Yale for college and saw a slice of tomato with a peel and seed, I thought it was the oddest thing I'd ever seen. Oh, my <laughs> is gosh. That right? Is that right? Wow. So tell me... Um about somebody or patients maybe you've had that that decided to follow the rules, follow the get off the lectins, and uh, how did it change them? What did it do? Well, let me give you an example. Uh, last month at the American Heart Association, I gave a paper of 102 uh, patients with uh, proven autoimmune disease, that is like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, uh, Crohn's disease, who uh, went on my program for six months, and at the end of six months, 95 out of 102 of the patients were completely negative for all the biomarkers for their autoimmune disease, were off of all of their medications. So uh, about 95% of people we see go into remission or cure from an autoimmune disease by getting lectin-containing foods out of their diet. And wow. it's just astounding. Wow. Yeah. So, oh, oh my gosh, So, is does the book or does the previous book have the list of foods that, that we need to stay away from? Yeah, here's the great news. Uh, when I came out with the cookbook, uh, so many people had adopted this lifestyle that they said, okay, well, you know, what do we eat, for goodness sakes? So the cookbook has 100 uh, new recipes uh, that some of my patients designed. We had some James Beard award-winning chefs who had changed their lives, designed some of the recipes. And what we wanted to do is make it everyday friendly that you know a working mom and dad could come home from work and get a meal uh, for the family uh, done in 15, 20 minutes rather than going to the fast food place. And it's foods you recognize, like waffles, like pancakes, uh, like pizza. Mm -hmm. But it's all made from safe ingredients. So uh, there's a summary of the plant paradox in the plant paradox cookbook. Uh, several readers have already written in and say, wow, this summary is so much more user friendly than the original book. Uh, oh, just really? go get the cookbook. Yeah. So and that's what I wanted to do with it. Uh -huh. And uh, you really talk about the difference between um, uh, uh, uh roaming animals and cage free and then you also take it one step further yeah. and do about the dairy about the milk itself yeah it's a fascinating problem with milk most most people think who who think they're lactose intolerant actually are not lactose intolerant they're they react to a lectin-like protein in most cow's milk called casein a1 and it turns out that 2,000 years ago, northern European cows had a genetic mutation. They started to make a protein called casein A1, which is a lectin. The normal protein is casein A2, which is friendly. Uh, it's present in goats, sheep, water buffalo, and southern European cows. And what's interesting is a lot of people who are lactose intolerant go to Italy, and they have the gelato. And they come back and say, wow, there's no lactose in Italian gelato because I can eat the gelato just fine. Uh -huh. Well, there's, there's plenty of lactose in Italian gelato. It turns out that it's casein A2, so they don't react to oh, the milk. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and, uh, and why, but, do they use different cows or something? Yeah, a different breed of cow. Oh. Uh, our cow is, is the Holstein cow, the black and white cow that you see out in the fields outside of Ocala. Right, right. Um, and uh, those actually are the wild breed of cows. So that even if those cows are eating grass, they make a mischievous lectin-like protein in their milk, unfortunately. Wow. Uh, you won me over with the uh, uh, walnut bread because I love the breads that are homemade with nuts in them. And this is just so wow. good for me. me I too. love this. Yeah, there are nuts that are great for us, walnuts, pistachios, macadamia nuts, pecans, but there are and hazelnuts, but there are nuts that are horrible for us that are not nuts. So mm -hmm. peanuts and cashews are not nuts at all. They're beans. They're part of the legume family. And anybody who thinks that cashews are good for you, you have to realize that a cashew is part of the poison ivy family. Really? So the oh next my time, God. Yeah, so the <laughs> next time you're sitting around munching on cashews, just think of yourself munching on poison ivy. Oh my God. And think about what's going on on the inside of your intestines. And there's 
tremendous literature that show how dangerous cashews are. Wow. So, Darn it. Uh, okay, I, I, you may have said this in one in one ear or not the other. Is this a vegetarian diet? Is there any meat in, meat in here? Oh, I see, an egg, I see an egg. Wait a minute. Great, yeah, great question. So uh, all of my recipe, I, I was a professor at Loma Linda University for many, many years, which is one of the Blue Zones uh, vegetarian institution. So I see a lot of vegan and vegetarian patients. And so all the recipes in the Plant Paradox and the Plant Paradox cookbook have vegetarian and vegan options. So um, that's what's so friendly. I want people to eat plants, but you got to know which ones like you and which ones, you know, don't have your back. Uh, and this is just a guide. Can I, can I ask you something that is probably not related, but I'm just curious about it. When you said the seeds of a tomato, what is what is the uh, diverticulitis? Is that what it's called? Where, where people can't yeah. eat seeds? And is that is that part of the is it part of this whole picture or, or is it two separate things? No, yeah, that's two separate things. But believe it or not, uh, I treat a lot of people with diverticulitis and diverticulosis and we actually have them eat nuts. Uh, it's not the cause of diverticulosis. It's a totally different process. Uh, I can tell you from uh, our experience at Loma Linda that if I can get people to eat a half a cup of nuts a day and uh, religiously, lots of great things uh, follow. Your heart health gets much, much better. Your bowel health gets much, much better. Nuts actually feed friendly bacteria that live in our gut. And as I talk about in the book, the more I can have you eat what our bugs that live in our gut like to eat, the more they will take care of you. Oh, that's wonderful. Wow. Uh, you, you, yeah. you talk about the uh, different dressings, um, especially vinaigrette. I, I love that. Well, here's the deal. I have a, a saying that's become fairly famous um, with me is the only purpose of food is to get olive oil into your mouth. <laughs> there, there, are, there are beautiful studies uh, from Spain and in Italy and in Greece that have had people uh, 65 years of age uh, have them use a liter of olive oil per week. Now you, you got to visualize that. Uh, think of a you know a two liter soda bottle, and think about having half of a soda bottle uh, every week. That's about twelve to fourteen tablespoons a day. And they followed these people for five years, <clears throat> and these people who consume that much olive oil actually had improved memory at the age of 70 than they did when they were 65 years of age. And studies have shown that because there are chemicals in olive oil called polyphenols that actually stimulate brain cells to grow and make new connections, it's really exciting stuff. So get your olive oil in. Bring the olive oil to the table. Don't just cook with it. Pour it on anything. Really? Okay, so t talk about cooking. I heard that olive oil is good unless you cook it. Is, that, is there any truth no. about it? No, actually a study at the National Institutes of Health showed that in fact olive oil does not degrade under high heat. Uh, olive oil has been used as a cooking liquid for 5,000 years in the Mediterranean, and those guys do pretty doggone good. So don't be afraid of cooking with olive oil. I've known some people that cucumbers do not agree with them. They make them feel totally bloated. That's because cucumbers are a part of the squash family, and squashes have huge amounts of lectins. And so cucumbers are a no-no unless you peel and de-seed them. So that person is absolutely right. In fact, I was in France lecturing a few weeks ago, and they had some cucumbers for breakfast, but lo and behold, the cucumbers were peeled and de-seeded, strips of them. I was lecturing last year in Istanbul, in Turkey, and their salad was served with peeled and de-seeded cucumbers and peeled and de-seeded tomatoes and i went son of a gun they must have known i was visiting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said that lectins also cause waking 
Yeah. Uh, we Let me give you a perfect example. I, I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, where at that time the world's largest stockyards were feeding lots. And we fattened cows and pigs and chickens with corn and soybeans and wheat. And you couldn't fatten a cow or a pig or a chicken on grass and bugs. You had to feed them grains and beans. And lo and behold, uh, my research and other people's research has now shown that the lectins in grains and beans promote weight gain by actually forcing sugar into fat cells. And that's how we fattened animals. And guess what? We're an animal. So I have a whole chapter that shows how this happens. But uh, I used to be 70 pounds overweight, eating a very healthy vegetarian diet, eating lots of grains and beans and running 30 miles a week and going to the gym one hour a day and going, why am I? Wow. And I lost all my weight and have kept it off for 17 years now by avoiding these lectin-containing foods. Oh my so goodness. if you want to lose weight and you're frustrated, I can tell you that a big piece of it is lectin. So what is the, is the list really long? It's, so it sounds like tomatoes are okay as long as you take the peel and the seeds out. And potatoes are okay for you long, as long as you peel them, right? No, potatoes are, you, you, can't, you can't fix a potato. Oh, so potatoes, <laughs> so potatoes are not on the good list. Okay. Yeah, so a sweet potato is fine. Uh, things like jicama, you know, uh, is great for dipping into guacamole. Have all the avocados you want. Uh, have some nuts. You can have any green things. Probably don't eat romaine lettuce for now, but there's plenty of other things. You know, I, 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 wanna, oh I don't know if your publicist listens to your, her interviews that she schedules, but Donna Gould is, is a friend of ours. And, uh, yeah. And we oh, have, really? Yeah, and we have a, a love relationship with the Subway Sandwich Shop. Yeah, we so, do. <laughs> <laughs> we share our relationship with her with Subway. So I, next time we go to a Subway with her, I want to make sure that I don't eat anything with lectins. Um. <laughs> That's correct. And in fact, it's just rather humorous. I have a patient who owns a number of subway shops, and I told him that, you know, that's just fine. You, know, you can serve it, but don't eat it. And we, so we have an agreement. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I get? I mean, do I, what do I avoid? How about that? What, what do I avoid? Do I avoid, uh, I don't, lettuce is okay, right? I, I like lettuce. Do I oh, avoid? yeah, lettuce, lettuce is great. Uh, what you want to have is the subway without the sub. Uh, so don't eat, don't eat the bread and you'll be just fine and say, no, I don't want the tomatoes and the peppers on that, please. So just give me a bunch of lettuce. And if you want to have some, you know, salami from Italy or some prosciutto from Italy, it's perfectly fine. And then ask for a lot of olive oil and make a salad out of it. I have lots of people do that. That actually sounds pretty good, actually. <laughs> All right. It really is. All right. So that's my thing. I'm going to start doing this. Uh, you bring up ice cream. Uh-oh. I love ice cream. Uh-oh. Is that good or bad? So ice cream in America, unfortunately, is made from the wrong cow's milk. There is, believe it or not, a goat's milk ice cream called La Luz, which is quite safe. Uh, so Delicious makes a sugar-free ice cream out of coconut milk that I love. But in the book, we've got recipes for pistachio ice cream. We've got olive oil ice cream, and don't wrinkle your nose. It's unbelievable. And it's made from coconut milk and avocados. And believe it or not, I've even got chocolate pie in the book made with an almond crust, and the chocolate pie has three avocados in it for creaminess. And believe me, you won't taste the avocados. It is decadent and sugar-free, and so you can have the foods you want that are actually going to be good for you rather than kill you. That's my whole purpose in life. Uh, you talk about fish. Yep. Wild fish. So, please eat wild fish. Here's one of the things I try to convince everybody. If it says organic fish, or if it says farm-raised fish like tilapia or catfish, these are fed grains and beans. They're not fed what they're supposed to eat. And there is no such thing as a safe organic salmon. When you see the words organic salmon, they did not go follow the salmon around in the ocean to see if he was eating organically. <laughs> what that means is they 
fed them organic grains and beans in a fish farm. And so you are what you eat, but you are what the thing you're eating ate. And so it's just as important to know what that thing was eating. For instance, free range chicken, free range chicken by law is kept in a warehouse with a hundred thousand other birds fed corn and grains and beans. And as long as you open a door to the outside for five minutes every 24 hours, that's the legal definition of a free range chicken. Oh my wow. God. It was passed by the federal government in 2007, introduced by a congressman from Georgia up the road from you in a chicken farming district. Mm, yeah, well, that makes sense. Um, you know, I was looking for bread. I finally found bread in here because you don't like bread, apparently, right? But walnut bread. Well, is bread a, I'm sorry. I love walnut right. bread. Yeah, and make bread from coconut flour, almond flour, cassava flour, nut flours. They're great for you. And I've got muffin recipes, carrot cake muffin recipes. Uh, you can make the things you think you want, but you can make them out of safe ingredients that aren't going to kill you. Um, what about the uh, the spread on the bread? Like I like, you know what I discovered recently? Irish butter. It's really good. But but I wrong cow, wrong cow, wrong cow. Oh. Yeah, believe it or not, those nice people who make Irish butter put a picture of their cow on the label, and it's a Holstein cow. And they're so nice because they're basically telling you, please don't eat this because it's the wrong cow. And <laughs> 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 So you can have French butter, you can have Italian butter. Most Costco's carry Italian butter. Really? Trader Joe's carry, yeah, Trader Joe's carries French butter. So it's the cow, it's the breed of cow that makes all the difference. Does it taste good? Oh, delicious. What about what about Amish butter? We got a lot of that around here for some reason. I don't yeah. know what it is about Florida and the Amish. I thought they were supposed to be in Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, so, so there are breeds of cows in the United States that are safe. So, and you got to ask your farmer. So, a Guernsey cow uh, is—it's that beautiful cow that's kind of all you know, pale. Uh, uh, Elsie, the cow from Borden days, was a Guernsey cow. And there's another one called a Belgian blue cow, and there's another one called a Swiss brown cow. And those are all uh, safe cows. And there are still herds of them, but. Interestingly enough, the Holstein cow, the black and white cow, gave more milk and was hardier. So the Holstein cow is the major cow in the United States and Canada and Australia and New Zealand and all of Northern Europe. Wow. But, yeah. Um, doctor, thank you for the great information. We've recorded this, so anybody who wants to share it, you'll be able to do that. I'll put it up online by 2 this afternoon. Um, Dr. Stephen Gundry gave us a copy of the book, The Plant Paradox Cookbook, if you would like the copy that was sent to us. I'm going to buy my own. I just I want to make yeah. sure I give it to somebody. Call me right now. I'll put your name on it. Robin will leave it for you here at the station. Um, the rest of us have to go buy it. I found it on Amazon, and it looks like a I lot of people... The phones are lighting up. Yeah, they're lighting up. Uh, doctor, do you have a website? <laughs> Do you have a website? Yeah, go to, go to GundryMD.com. You can sign up for my daily newsletter, and we'll uh, fill your brain with all sorts of interesting things. All right, all right. Real quickly, let me give the book away. Good morning. You've got the book. Who's this? Edwina. Edwina. Hold on, Edwina. We need to get your information off the air. Um, don't go away. Uh, Dr. Gundry, Gundry, thank you so much. Thanks for having News me. Radio. I'm Chris Foster. A judge appointed by President George W. Bush rules against President Trump on DACA, the program protecting some younger illegal immigrants from deportation. Calling President Trump's decision to end DACA arbitrary and capricious, a federal judge ruled the administration must accept and process new and renewal applications for the Obama-era program. The judge is giving the Homeland Security Department 90 days to, quote, better explain its view that DACA is unlawful. Fox is Rachel Sutherland. A man wanted for shooting two police officers and an employee at a Home Depot in Dallas has been caught. The suspect drove off and police took pursuit. We got our man. Dallas Mayor Mike Rawlings. Police Chief Renee Hall says her two officers and the Home Depot employee survived. They're out of surgery and we're asking for your continued prayers. Armando Luis Juarez is now charged with assaulting the officers. He also had an outstanding warrant for felony theft. Fox's Evan Brown. Fox News. We report. You decide. 
At Progressive, we think your custom cupcake shop is first class. Yeah, your cupcakes were first class from your first day of cupcake class right up till you graduated. First in your class. And a first class, first in class top brass like yourself deserves Progressive Business Insurance. With over 30 business and vehicle options, you'll feel like you and your cupcakes are flying. First class. So move your center of mass to ProgressiveCommercial.com real fast. 